Whoop Ash Nebula. Oh fuck! Oh, I forgot we have space combat. All right, hang on. Switching mics here. All right, hold on. I don't remember any of this. That's this why I gave it to you. This is going to be magical. <laughs> Thankfully, we have all our controls here. You know, I see some uh, I fire see some, guns, some destructible secondary weapons, turbo, barrel rolls. Barrel roll. This is a. Uh, this was a Roberto special, right? Roberto and uh, and Eric stayed really late doing this. Yeah, there was. Man, space combat. I don't think people know the saga of space combat in Ratchet and Clank games. And I don't think we want to really go into it. Because <laughs> there was a lot going on with this. It was uh, it was brutal, man, making these. Oh, yeah, so if you keep your reticle on them for a certain amount of time, you lock on and then you can shoot the uh, missiles, I think. Oh, we got auto fire. Okay, that's where I was going wrong. Here we go. The big one of the big challenges in this one was uh, we give you 780 degrees of movement uh, was just sort of knowing where the enemies are and a lot of what uh, uh, the guys making this section had to deal with was getting them to fly in front of you so you would know they were there but right just sort of sit there you know uh, that was one of the big reasons we didn't have this in, in up your arsenal was because this this feature was just such a huge time sink in terms of development and it was just for you know a little mini game yeah i mean it's a full it's a full game to yeah. make a, a, a proper space combat mm -hmm. and same with uh, racing which is why we didn't have that in up your arsenal yeah there's a lot of stuff packed in this game i completely forgot we had space combat in this game we're gonna, we have a uh, race hoverboard races we, have, we might have to bring in uh, mary as a guest for the, <laughs> the hover bike racing because she was a uh, mary hover bike chick on that one she did all the. She was doing QA. Man, I'm getting my. Uh, I'm getting beat down on this one. You're not doing too bad. I don't remember how many waves we got though. This is my. That's the big problem right now. Oh, raritanium. I think if I. If you get those rocks for life or no? In raritanium. Well, some some of them have life in them. And they can't hit you while you're spinning, if I remember correctly. But yeah, blow up some rocks. The rare titanium, I remember, lets you buy ship upgrades. You can get right. skins and wings and stuff. I mean, I'm even life pretty bad right now. I'm in a world of pain. Oh, missile! Man, I don't even want to talk now. I'm worried I'm going to make you lose. I, I have that thing. I think there's life in there. The, the, the crystal. Nope, just rare tanner. Sorry. I don't know where I get my life. I'm hoping there's no more than two waves. You only have three more ships to go, Tony. more I, okay there you go all right yeah, all right there we go the Mac -tar nebula that was you know what tony pro that was good times that was pro for being surprised and taken off guard i think i did a pretty good job i'm with you wow okay here uh let's switch mics again Okay, uh, Maktar Resort. Maktar Resort, man. I keep uh, trying to hit circle to get out of these menus uh, <laughs> because later on we changed it to that, which I think became sort of the PlayStation standard. Uh, I coded uh, I, uh, a version of this. Uh, this. This specific one was coded by uh, Greg, but uh, I did the, one, the version of this that shows up in the museum. Got it. Yeah. Uh, I think there's, there's a few of these that show pictures of uh, Jack. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it's in this level or not, but. Oh, dude, it's your it's your guy. Oh, these are Peters. So Peter did the, the the version of these guys. Yeah, every level had every level they were in, right? Had a custom coded. Had a custom coded brute. I guess they're brutes. Uh, I don't know what they're actually called. I wish we could go to uh, an encyclopedia of sorts that would tell us the name and a bit of history about the enemies. Uh, I and wish I we could we... do that too. Help, Monsterpedia. There we go. There we okay, go. here we go. Uh, yeah, equip standard. Shaman. Okay. Uh, blade light, balls. Blade ball. All right. The mutant muck dweller. Oh wait, dude, it, 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 it's, it's in, in there. there. Okay. 
<laughs> I wrote that. that you did it get happy. censored? Oh, awesome. Uh, mutant Swamp Beast, Mutant Fireflies, Swamp Monster 1, Thugs the 4, Less okay, Brute. So yeah. the Brute. And uh, the Chicken Bot, who I don't actually think we've come up against, but he's just in this level. Right. Uh, oh, there they are. They're right there in front of you. Oh, there we go. Chicken Bot. I remember this level was really rich in terms of uh, how much... How many bolts the, the yeah. gravy breakables give This you is where it really, the, the economy really starts to take off. Because, uh, I mean, between the uh, the breakables and the number of crates and the number of enemies, you also have the arena sections where, you know, you just, you're just making bank. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is where you can really start to get a lot of weapons if you try. Yeah. The, uh, uh, so the, now we're going into the inspector bot segment. This, this is all was, you. This is 100% you? This is 100% me, yeah. Uh, I think coded coded by uh, Peter Hastings, and then I coded a little bit on it, but it was mainly, mainly Peter. And I know this still haunts you uh, to this well, day. Yeah, actually, I wrote an article on, on Gama Sutra right. about my trials and tribulations. But don't go read that right. now, because we're going to talk about it. Yeah, and then after you get done, the gist of it. Go and read then, the article. So this, uh, this was the segment where uh, this was the segment that broke me as a designer. This was, okay. Uh, like me and, and I, every designer I know sort of knows this. Uh, there's this moment where you go from designing for yourself to designing for the player. And we always refer to this as, as the moment where you're broken as a designer, like broken spirited, like a horse, right? And what happened was uh, uh, our, our uh, design director, Brian Algeyer, sat me down because this, this level was a huge problem and he could tell. And he said, okay, we're going to go to a user test. Uh, we called them focus tests back then next week. And uh, uh, this is what's going to happen. It's going to come into the room and he's going to say, I don't understand what's going on. Oh, here's the thing. I'm going to hit it with the wrench. Oh, wait, no, that doesn't do anything. Uh, oh, what's this? This is glowing. I'm going to come over here and hit it with the wrench. Oh, I don't know what's going on. This is, uh, hit this door with the wrench, right? And uh, if you do this long enough, then a, a message will pop up telling you what you exactly what you have to do. And I was like, you know, I, I thought... It's not necessary to have a message to tell you exactly what to do. It's perfectly obvious. Well, as it turns out, the kids had exactly the same problems that right. Elgar was talking about. So I went and I watched the kids play it and uh, just watched them fail repeatedly over and over and over again. And it was it was a real eye-opener for me uh, in my design life. So what would you say the biggest problem uh, in terms of readability? Like if you could go back now and say you had to design this puzzle. How would you make it more readable in terms of telling the player you have to take that guy onto that pad to continue? Well, first off, I would I would try to be a little more <laughs> I'm scoobying. Uh, I, I would try to be much more lean with my design. So when you're a junior designer, you want to pack as much different stuff as you can. Like I have the inspector bot, and then I have these bombs, and then I have these bomb slingshots, and then I have these bomb slingshots destroying targets. And it's and you have to use the inspector bot in the slingshot. Like there's just so much going on that by the time the players learn something, he doesn't get a chance to just show his mastery over it. Right? right. So I would I would scale this way back. And the other thing is, uh, take the inspector bot to the pad is the exact same gameplay as take the bomb to the door. You know, uh, is the exact same gameplay as put the inspector bot on the uh, uh, right uh, slingshot. You know, like there was no. I wasn't asking the player to do anything different, but I was making it look different enough that he couldn't figure out how to do it. So I would I would scale all this way back. I would have this all be maybe just about the bomb or just about the inspector bot, you know. Uh, the, the the bomb slingshot shooting targets thing was actually probably the 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 only thing in this segment that actually sort of was scalable and had you know. Oh shit! <laughs> Stop talking. Um, so yes, kids kids would never know what to do in here. Um, they would go up here and they'd say, "What's this?" and hit it with the wrench. And uh, what what you have to do is is grab the inspector bot and put him on. And you're supposed to know this because there's feet there. Right. But uh, I mean, and those feet weren't even there in the first test. I I ever did this. And then you have to somehow figure out that you need to like run backwards like a slingshot and fling him up there. And I'm uh, in my original design, you actually had to. Uh, uh, be really accurate with it and get him on the pad. I think he helps you to a certain extent now. And you can't even see the pad from down. Oh my god. 
Um, I remember uh, uh, in uh, Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal, uh, Mark Cerny was playing through one of my segments, and he said, uh, uh, Mike, this is as good as Ratchet gameplay gets. That totally makes up for the Inspector Bot segment in Ratchet 2. <laughs> and it was the, probably the greatest uh, uh, double-edged compliment I've ever gotten in my career. Uh, some strafing in here. All right, and if I remember correctly, you got to go over here. No? Hit it with the oh. wrench. Yeah, hit it with the wrench. Oh, got it. I've turned oh. it. Oh, Aspirin oh, oh. surface. You're in trouble, Mike. You're hurting. Oh, because Ratchet's sagging there? How much life do I have left? You got here? one pip. I don't know what we call them. What do we call segments? Uh, I call it a pilf. Segments, maybe? I don't know. Oh, and you got to, like, bring the bomb back through this area. And there's no nanotech anywhere in here because this this area was so easy, uh, you know, for me because I played it all the time. I was like, nah, we don't need any nanotech in here. And you know, Brian Algar was like, you know we what? need that's some nanotech a, in here. That's a particularly interesting problem. I don't think we've touched on right now is how difficult difficulty tuning is uh, in the enemy setups for Ratchet and Clank because we all got incredibly good at the game. Uh, everybody got incredibly good at their levels, and nobody thought their levels were hard at all. And then you would hand it off to somebody else, and you would be astonished by how much more difficult it was for everybody else. Yeah, especially especially younger gamers Yeah, uh, who this is targeted at. You really can never, ever tune your difficulty based on how you play, because, you know, and you just died. Uh, checkpoint! Checkpoint! Okay, thank God. Uh, and I'll bet that checkpoint was forced on me by someone. Thank you, whoever forced that on me. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I I remember uh, Roberto used to have a, a a way that he'd tune it. He would play with the controller upside down. Right. And then he got too good at that, so he started playing with it upside down and backwards, and then one hand at a time. And it's just you have to do go through so much. Uh... Dude, and that door doesn't even look like the other door that you <laughs> blow up with the bomb. Oh, this is so. Like, I would fire me if I designed if if I design if I was my boss at this point. Holy crap. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, I was a junior designer. Oh, I'm still, <laughs> still learning the craft. Oh, God. Oh, so then you gotta, you gotta hit these things with the tractor beam slingshot. And we put these little uh, circles on the ground so that you could kind of tell where you were and uh, how, how far you yeah. had to go. But that was, uh, that was in, in response to complaints that you, know, you couldn't tell uh, you know, how, where you were standing the last time because right. there was no detail on the floor. Oh. I was about to say, I think we put a lot of generous auto aim on this, but apparently not no. that generous auto aim on No. This. You know what? Me now, I would put generous auto aim, but uh, me back in the day, the I was time. like, no, that's not fucking hardcore enough for former tester Mike Stout. Right, you want to make a skills challenge out of this. Exactly. Like really test the player. It would like those old games, Gorilla, or, you know, like this is, you know, I like to think that this mechanic inspired Angry Birds. Is that... Uh, I'm waiting for my royalty check still. But yeah, I mean, you really have to make sure the player is tested in level two of the game. Yeah. If they're really... <laughs> they need to show how hardcore they are. That's the time to really put the player's skills to the test. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta put them through their paces, Tony. Uh, you don't want him to get flabby, right? Mike, you're just trying to kill yourself, is what's going on here. I thought you wanted me to get all the crates. So those that we those get crates the... explode, though, Mike. <laughs> oh, here we got the limo. Right. Nice, the... another little variation on the taxi. Oh, this takes you up to a spherical world. Oh, wow. All right. 